Okay, so now uh, we are going to uh, do the exercise uh, that uh, are the exercise for the lesson 101, uh, lesson 1 or 101. So in, uh, if you didn't look, uh, if you didn't watch it, go to watch it, lesson 1, class 101, uh, Italian beginners. And uh, basically in that class we did the pronunciation, the five hours. Um, and then we did uh, uh, gender and number um, of nouns and uh, rules uh, of pronunciation. Um, so let's start immediately. Okay, so here we are and we start uh, with the exercise about uh, the lesson, the part of the lesson about the gender uh, and number. Number of nouns so let's see with this exercise for example let's go with the casa let's go with gatto then uh, let's go with the mela let's go with the cane Elefante, um, città, università, mm, let's say um, papà. Papa, let's say Podesta. Then uh, what else? What else? Uh, um, barista. Pianista. Albero. Macchina. Uh, pianta mm, let's say cavallo stazione stazione adozione mm, bambola And let's say um, montagna. So here you see uh, a bunch of um, nouns. And let's just uh, see if you remember the meaning. This is very good. It's a house. You remember this one? What is this one? Cat. This is apple, dog, elephant, this is pretty easy, this is a city or town, this is a university or college, this is daddy, dad, daddy, this is Podesta, he was the king of Venice, he was a king. Is a king, uh, it was the king of the city of uh, Venice in the Middle Age. You probably wondering why I brought that word, you will see later. This means uh, bartender, bartender. Mm -hmm. This uh, means uh, pianist, that is pretty intuitive. This is a tree. Car, we call the car machine. Pianta is a plant, like the, the one that you have in your backyard. Oh gosh, what a word! <laughs> okay, so here cavallo, cavallo is a horse. 
then we have a stazione, it means a station, train station or bus station, whatever, adoption, for example, you adopt a puppy, uh, bambola is a doll, and montagna is a mountain, okay? Okay, first of all, um, let's uh, uh, draw here our four model, okay, of the gender and number of nouns, so it's easier, right? Because uh, we study in the first lesson, but you know, to have them here just to do this exercise. So, the number one was the most important, the majority of words, 80 or 90 percent, I don't know exactly. O, A, E, and E. This is the number two, that was A e and A, e. E and E. The number three, it was a accent, a accent, a accent, and a accent. And the number four instead was a, a, E, and A. E. Okay, so now let's start with casa. Casa means house and you need to know if it's masculine or feminine or whatever it is. Casa belong to what you remember, belong to this one. In fact, is ending A, so it's feminine. And to make the plural, you just go down one space and you're gonna have case. The plural of casa is case. You got it from here. Because basically, you have to be able to individuate to which one of those uh, cases uh, the word uh, in Italian belong in order to find out the right uh, uh, pattern to follow to make the word plural. Uh, I, re I remind you that in Italian is like in Spanish, the word has a gender. Gatto is masculine, in fact, is here. So, gatto belongs to this first group. Um, if you go to see the exercise, you see that this is ma this quadrant is masculine singular and this is uh, masculine plural. So to make it plural, you just substitute the O with an E. Then now you have Mela. Mela, you see, and in A, okay, belong to this group. So to make it plural, you know that it's feminine singular because it's here. To make it plural, you gotta go down here and it's gonna become mele. The plural of mela is mele. Then we have cane. Cane belongs to the second group. Is masculine. In this word, you don't know if a noun is masculine or feminine because you see in this second group the masculine and the feminine end the same way. But there is a trick, every word ending in Sione is feminine, so cane ending in E is no ending in Sione, so we know it's masculine, and to make it plural, we uh, substitute the E with an E, so the plural of cane will be cani. Same for elefante, same reasoning, is here ending E is in the second group, so the plural will be elefanti, E le fan ti città città belong to this one you see all a in ever change the plural it remain the same so città it will be città it doesn't change same for università every word ending in a accent it doesn't change the plural of course change the article ma not the word so univer Sita. The plural is the same because it ends in an accent and I suggest you to go to look the lesson if you didn't. Same for papa. Papa is a feminine, is a, sorry, is masculine. All the words ending in an accent are feminine. The only two exceptions are those two words that are masculine. All the other words ending in an accent are feminine. And podesta, the plural is podesta, podesta because it follows this pattern that it doesn't change, and the plural is the same as the singular. Now we have barista, barista is in this group, there are very few words in this group, like I say in the lesson, are all musicians and then a couple more, one, two, you just have to remember, barista belong in this group, 
So barista depends if he's a man or if he's a woman. If he's a man, because you see they are the same, barista, barista, men and women are uh, singular are the same. So if, if you want to make the plural with men, cioè a lot of bartenders or guy, it will be baristi, okay? If instead you want to make the plural because you say there are women, the plural will be bariste. Now let's say pianista. Pianista, like I said, all the musicians belong in these four pattern, pattern too. So it's the same as barista. Pianista can be a man or a woman. So pianista, if uh, he's a guy, so the plural you make a guy, it will be pianisti. If instead you uh, say is a woman, the plural will be pianiste. Pianiste. So albero, albero ending O belong to the first one. Of those three, four, uh, four ones that I wrote at the top is the first one. So the plural is masculine singular, so the plural will be alberi. Okay? Alberi. Macchina, it means car, and it belongs to the first group, is a feminine because it ends in A, so the plural will be macchine. Ma, chi, ne. Now let's say pianta, and in A, belongs to the first group, the plural is piante, because it's feminine, so feminine singular, and in A, feminine plural, and in A for the first group. Cavallo and in O uh, belong to the first as well, so the plural will be cavalli. Stazione, stazione and in A, but uh, I remind you the trick. Every word ending in zione is feminine. Because it's feminine, it belongs in this group, uh, is uh, here, in this group. So the plural, the plural will be stazioni, stazioni, now same for this word, adozione, and inzione, you know it's feminine, why important to know if it's feminine or masculine, because when we study in the next lesson the articles, the articles need to match, if the noun is masculine, the articles, the articles gotta be masculine and so on. So, adozione at the plural will be adozioni. Bambola, doll. So, here is feminine, plural will be bambole. So, many dolls. And, oh, here is a mistake, I'm sorry. Is montagna. Is written like that. Montagna, plural, so, so it belongs to the first group as well. And the plural is feminine singular, so the plural will be montagne. Montagne. There you go. So now we continue with the exercise for the second part. That it was the rules. We, do, we did in that lesson also the rules of pronunciation. So, rules of pronunciation. Here we go. So, with the rules of pronunciation, so with the rules of pronunciation, let's write some words and then we read them. Cane, casa, cina. Cena, uh, gelato, gallo, gatto, cipolla, um, chiesa. Um, let's see, chiave, yeah. 
ghiaccio, gioco, sciarpa, scarpa, ciliegia, coppa, um, scatola, scheletro, Let's see, vabbè, un canduciame. Ok, so just, uh, let's, let's just proceed to translate, you know that, right? You know it pretty well, this is house. This is China, right? It is the country, the country of China. Cena is a dinner, in Italian we say cena is dinner. Gelato, everybody knows that gelato is an ice cream. Gallo is a rooster. Gatto, cat. Cipolla, onion. Chiesa, church. Chiave is a key. Ghiaccio, ice. Gioco, is a, a game sharpa is a, a scarf a scarpa is a shoe ciliegia is a cherry a coppa is a, a flute i will say a glass but is made is better to say a flute a flute for champagne for example scatola is a box skeleton is a, a skeleton skeleton and shame is a swarm swarm maybe bees or wasps whatever okay okay so here we are uh, let's see the pronunciation of those uh, use of pronunciation here on the top I write you the reminder you have to remember that you have the strong vowel A, O, U these vowels are strong and make the sound strong okay then E and A is, are the other two vowels that they have a soft sound also the letter H make always the sound strong so those vowels plus the H make the sound strong and here instead you have the soft this way you're gonna learn uh, the use of pronunciation they are very boring but very important very important so you should learn them because this way you will be able to read correctly everything in Italian Let's see this word. How you pronounce this word? Exactly. Cane. This word? Casa. This word? Cina. See? See? This and this are the same letter. So why here you pronounce the chi and here k? Because the letter a is strong every time you have the letter c in front of a strong vowel that can be a or u uh, or o or u the sound of the vowel is like a k okay every time that's why you read differently instead when you have the um, c uh, these are these are only Reuse, those rules pronunciation are only about uh, the consonant C, the consonant G, and uh, the sound S plus C. Only for those three, only you apply the rules of pronunciation that I just told you only to those three, and you 
are okay. You know everything you need to know for the pronunciation Italian. So here, let's see, cena. Okay, why you say cena? Because here, the A, here it is, uh, is a soft vowel. So because it's a soft vowel, you pronunciate chi, like in China. So you pronunciate strong here and soft here, because here, A is a strong vowel, instead here, E and A are the soft vowel. The same for G, because like I told you, the rules of pronunciation, you apply to the letter C and also to the letter G. Here you have G. After the letter G, there is a soft one or a strong one? Very good, a soft one. So, you pronunciate like this letter, like J, gelato, okay? J. After this one, A is strong, so you pronunciate gallo, ga, strong. Same for gatto, because A is strong, gatto. Here, after the letter C, you have a, a soft one, so you don't pronounce chi, you pronounce chi, because you have a soft vowel. Here it is, the letter E. Okay, now we found an H. Where there is a written here that the sound with H is always strong. So, this will be pronounce, pronounced chiesa. Okay, chiesa. Here you have another H. So, chiave, strong, because it's H. Same, um, the G also apply for those rules. There is an H. So, G, ghiaccio, ghiaccio. Here, instead, you have a soft vowel. So, it will be like the letter J. Gioco, gioco. Now, you have the sound, because I told you that apply to the letter C, to the letter G, and to this sound, S plus C. When you have a soft vowel in front of this sound, you pronounce sh. So in this case, a scarf is sharpa. Sharpa. Instead, because in front of this sound, here you have a strong vowel, you're going to pronounce it scarpa. Then, in front of, let's see here, we have a soft, so ciliegia. Here in this word, you have a strong, the O is strong, so it will be coppa. This means box, but you see, A is strong, so you pronounce scatola. Here you have an E that is soft, but it doesn't matter because the H makes it strong all the time, so skeleton will be pronunciated skeletro. And the last one, what do you think it is? It's soft. So, it will be pronounced shame. So, for the use of pronunciation, because some people find them complicated. So, just remember this. And you know, they are important because you will be um, able to read correctly everything in Italian, even stuff that you don't know what that means, because Italian is a phonetical language. So, A, O, U. A o U are the three strong vowels. They are strong. Instead, E and A are the two soft vowels. Okay? There is one more thing. H is always strong. Just those two things to remember. Those two things to remember, and you will be alright. Just remember that those apply to the sound that the letter C, letter G, and this sound. So when this is strong, it will be K. When it's soft, it will be CH. Strong G, soft J, like the letter J. With this, when it's strong, it will be SK, like in scatola. When it's soft, it will be SH, like in sharpa. That's it. So. Ciao!